Hi there friends. I always say good evening, but it turns out that right now in this season of pandemic, you may be watching this at 6 p.m. on Sunday and you may be watching it at 3 a.m., at 2 p.m., at 9.30 a.m. and everywhere in between. And so good whatever time of day it is. <laughs> Welcome to worship this week at Sundays at 6. We are so glad that you are here. If we haven't met, my name is Christina and I'm one of the pastors at Wrightsville. And along with Annie Jewell and our band, Annie Oak, we lead this weekly worship gathering. Right now we are meeting online because of the coronavirus and we don't know quite when we will be meeting in person again. This week, you will be receiving a newsletter with some news from Pastor Doug about next steps that our, our church hopes to take in not reopening, but regathering together in small groups, both in the building and outside of the building. But until then, we are going to continue to worship and to be in a bit of a season of walking around in the wilderness with the book of Exodus in our series that we are calling Freedom Songs. Freedom Songs are songs, both African-American spirituals and songs of the civil rights movement that talked about particularly the struggle of black and brown folks in this country. But the book of Exodus is also completely full of these freedom songs. And so we are going to be looking at Exodus alongside different pandemics in our world, with the pandemic of systemic racism and the pandemic of the coronavirus, as well as many of our searches for normalcy and meaning right now. We are so glad this evening to have a guest speaker. Natalie Day will be giving our message this evening. Natalie is a rising third year student at Duke Divinity School where she's pursuing a Master of Divinity degree. She is a native of Texas and is a certified candidate for ministry, for ordained ministry in the Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church. And she has served last summer in person, the Anchor UMC in Wilmington, and this past year served as a clinical pastoral education intern at UNC Hospitals. This is the one and only time I will allow you to say go heels. But Natalie has been serving with Warm Wilmington Area of Rebuilding Ministry in a virtual setting this summer because of COVID-19. And I've had the chance to work with her and learn from her heart and her wisdom. And so we're just so grateful she has been worshiping with us virtually this summer and that she's going to be giving us the message tonight on Moses Call and Holy Ground. We also have a really great mission opportunity to share with you. We are partners with Snipes Academy in downtown Wilmington. Snipes is a Title I school, and we are partners through the, com the conference's Congregations for Children program. Snipes is a year-round school, and so they, as many schools are, are thinking about reopening in person, and they have asked for our help in getting some Clorox wipes, Lysol wipes, any sort of disinfectant wipes for teachers to use in their classrooms. We know these are really scarce to find right now. I've heard that there may be some at Costco and other spots, but we invite you, if you have even one pack of wipes or something like that that you can share, to drop those off at the church. There's a basket outside during business hours and even after hours. Or if you'd rather give online, you can give at wrightsvilleumc.org and select Snipes. Or you can just mark Snipes on the memo line of your check. And last but not least, we are so glad, so grateful that you continue to give and that you continue to be generous. We could not keep doing Sundays at six without you. We couldn't keep having online vacation Bible school like we did this week with our children without you. We couldn't keep reaching out in worship and mission and all the things we're doing. And so we invite you, if you feel like God is speaking to you through our service, we invite you to give. You can give three ways. 
either at wrightsvilleumc.org or on the Wrightsville UMC app or by writing a check and mailing it to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, 28480. And now friends, as you hear the sounds of God's creation, but the sounds of water, the sounds of wind in the trees, and also the sounds of motorcycles, I invite you to take a deep breath in with me. And let's pray. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God of Moses and Miriam, we thank you that you always hear our cries, that you are always looking for us and seeking to find us so that we can be instruments of freedom. God, in this hour, speak to us and help us to take off our shoes. Remind us that we are here standing on holy ground. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our first song this evening is one that is one of my favorites and is also a beautiful rendition of the theme of calling that we'll be looking at through the story of Moses. And so I invite you as the band plays and Annie sings to join them in singing, Here I Am Lord. The words will be on your screen. Today's scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. I invite you to grab your Bibles and read along with me. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight, and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, 
I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the, that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to the Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. to be with you in person this summer but I have really enjoyed being able to worship with you all virtually and this experience has been a real gift to me so I'm really grateful that you've given up the floor to me today um, and I, I hope that my words to you and, and that God would speak through me um, and bless you all today. Before I dive in I invite you all to take a posture of prayer and so we can go to the Lord together. God, we're so grateful for this time and for this virtual space. 
God, I pray today that that you would um, use the words that come out of my mouth to bless those who are listening whatever time of day, whatever day it is. God, I pray that all of our meditations of our hearts and our thoughts would be acceptable to you. Uh, I pray that we would feel your presence in this time and as we go forth into the world from this place. It's in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So in Exodus 3, our scripture for today, we find Moses doing his job. He's shepherding his father-in-law Jethro's sheep. And if the book of Exodus started with chapter 3 instead of chapter 1, we might think that Moses is a normal guy with a normal background working a normal job. But that is far from the truth. In the first two chapters of Exodus, we learn that Moses was born secretly to a Hebrew woman in a time when the Pharaoh had decreed that all Hebrew baby boys had to be killed. Moses' mom secretly put Moses in a basket in the river and floated him downstream, hoping that someone would find him and raise him and that he might live a healthy life. Luckily for Moses and for Moses' mom, a young woman did find Moses downstream in the river. This young woman just happened to be the Pharaoh's daughter. She decided to raise Moses in the royal house as an Egyptian. She even hires Moses' birth mother to essentially be his nanny. Now this is already kind of a confusing upbringing, Moses is being raised as an Egyptian in the royal house of the Egyptians, but his heritage is of Hebrew descent. And at this time in Egypt, the Hebrews are slaves to the Egyptians. So this is already a complicated and confusing upbringing for Moses. Fast forward a few years and Moses is an adult. He sees an Egyptian man beating a Hebrew man. A Hebrew slave. This Hebrew slave is someone who Moses is related to. It's family. Moses feels he must intervene, and he does so by killing the Egyptian. After Moses hears that the Pharaoh is coming after him because of his murderous act, Moses flees Egypt, and he ends up in Midian, a land where he meets and marries a woman named Zipporah who is the daughter of a man named Jethro. Moses and and Zipporah have a son together, and Moses tends to his father-in-law's sheep. Now we've got a not-so-normal guy from a not-so-normal background working a pretty normal job. And now here we are, we're caught up with Moses to Exodus chapter 3. It's been a whirlwind of a life for Moses so far, and this is all happening before God calls him to lead the Israelites, the Hebrews, out of slavery in Egypt and take them, guide them into the promised land that God has set out for them. So when we see Moses tending sheep in Exodus 3, we're definitely not seeing a man who is born and raised on his family's farm and who meets and marries a nice girl from down the road and gets a job working for her father. No, no, no. When we see Moses tending sheep in Exodus 3, we see a man trying desperately to create a new normal for himself and to leave his past behind. His confusing upbringing and his mixed heritage, his sins, all of it, He wants to leave it all behind. All he wants is a quiet, normal life for himself. He wants to go to his job during the day and come home to his family at night. He wants a peaceful life. Moses was seeking a life I think a lot of us are seeking today. My guess is that most of us probably can't relate to the specifics of Moses' upbringing. But maybe we can relate 
to his search for normalcy. Every one of us had our lives rudely interrupted in some way when COVID-19 spread like wildfire across our country. Like me, maybe many of you hunkered down for the first couple of months just waiting for the storm to pass by. Maybe now you're getting to a point where the storm seems to just be sitting on top of us with no end in sight. It no longer feels like a storm to wait out, but a whole new weather system in which this storm is simply a constant of our lives. This storm, it feels like our new reality. We go about our days with masks. We keep six feet of space between us and the nearest person. Our summer vacations are either canceled or they're not quite what we hoped they would be. Maybe we feel like we're living in a dystopian novel. But even before COVID-19, our lives were far from perfect. Maybe we were still trying to find a new normal then, after losing a loved one, or have, after having a baby, or getting a new job, or losing an old job. We were all trying to find a normal then, and then the, then the pandemic hit, and normal started taking a whole new look, and finding that new normal got a lot harder. While there is the global experience of a pandemic right now, we're all a little bit like Moses. We each have our own histories, our own realities with which we're trying to cope and use to create a sense of normalcy. And it's in these moments when we're going through the motions of our daily lives, trying to feel calm in the chaos just swirling around us or behind us, in these moments, we might feel most distant from God, or maybe it feels like God is actually distant from us. At the beginning of this summer, I got in my car and I drove from Durham to Wilmington. I had high expectations that God would be at work in my life this summer through my Duke summer internship at WARM, the Wilmington Area Rebuilding Ministry and through worship with all of you at Wrightsville. I was very disappointed when just a few days after I arrived in Wilmington, I received an email from Duke saying that all interns would need to return home and continue their internships remotely due to COVID-19. While I of course understood the need for remote internships, I felt like driving back to Durham for the summer would mean that I wouldn't be able to experience what I had been hoping God would have in store for me this summer. Since being back in Durham, I've worked to establish my own routine of working with Warm remotely, but with the physical distance between Wilmington and me, it's been hard to feel connected. Of course, the folks at Warm have been incredibly welcoming and have helped me to understand the work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep the nonprofit going and what the nonprofit really stands for. They've given me meaningful work to do. And yet, with all of those things, it's still hard to feel God's presence in that community when it's all through a computer screen. I'm sure many of you have been feeling something similar in these past few months. And yet, we keep going forward. We keep trying to find our new normal in these strange circumstances. Just wondering where God is in the midst of all of this. These past couple of weeks, as I've been reading and meditating and praying Exodus 3, I've been, I feel like I've gotten a new perspective on God's presence in the midst of craziness. I first felt comfort when I realized Moses was seeking out a normal life after so much chaos, which is exactly what I feel like I'm doing, seeking normal in chaos. But it was verses two through four of Exodus three that have just lodged themselves in my mind and won't leave. I'll read them now again for you to refresh your memory. It reads, 
There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. As Moses went about his daily work shepherding a flock, God prepared for him a very unusual sight, a burning bush that was not being consumed by the fire. Moses' instinct was to be curious about what he was seeing. He turned toward the bush because he wondered what would cause such a strange thing. God created something that sparked Moses' sense of wonder and opened the door for God's communication with Moses. When Moses responded to God's creation of the burning bush with curiosity, God invited Moses to take off his sandals, for he was standing on holy ground. And then God invited Moses on the journey of a lifetime, a journey to free the Israelites from slavery and to bring them to the promised land. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it's easy to read a passage of scripture like this and just wish beyond wish that God still did stuff like this, stuff like set a bush aflame for us, just when he wanted to get our attention. But when I took the time to read the passage more slowly and read the passage again and again and again, and slower and slower and again, I realized that maybe it's not the idea of a burning bush that should stand out to us so much as the idea that we worship a God who gets our attention by igniting our sense of wonder. We worship a God who draws us in with beautiful, unusual, awe-inspiring things. We worship a God who interrupts our daily lives to bring us to holy ground. As children, we're often encouraged to be curious, to wonder about the world and the things we see. I know a big part of my parents' philosophy during my childhood consist consisted of cultivating curiosity in me hoping that it would help my cognitive development and ultimately help me succeed in life. But as I've grown up, I've become distant with that curious side of myself. When I was a little girl, I could spend hours lying in the grass in my backyard, looking up at the sky, wondering what animals the clouds most looked like today. Now, it's more likely that I'll go outside and look at the clouds just to determine if I need to bring a raincoat with me or not. But I wonder now, after spending time learning about Moses' journey and how it all started at this bush on a mountain, I wonder if our curiosity could benefit our spiritual development just as much or maybe even more than our cognitive development. What if our curiosity could point us to the areas in our life where God is calling out to us, drawing us into his light, if only we would notice? I recently read The Color Purple by Alice Walker, which taught me a few things about the importance of keeping our curiosity and our sense of wonder alive. In the book, one of the main characters comments that she thinks it makes God sad if we walk by the color purple in a field and don't notice it. Hmm. What if there was a bush on fire on a mountain and Moses walked by it and didn't think to turn aside and wonder about it? What if God is speaking to us 
through the things around us. Even when we're caught up in trying to find our new normal in crazy times. For those of us whose new normal has us feeling disconnected from God or disconnected from the people who keep us rooted, I feel confident that God can still speak to our sense of wonder, spark in us that sense of wonder, and draw us near to him if we will have eyes to see what he might be doing around us, ears to hear what he's doing, fingers to touch what he's doing. When Moses wondered at the miraculous sight before him, God told Moses to take off his shoes, for he was standing on holy ground. If you're able, I invite you who are listening or watching wherever you are to take off your shoes. Really, I mean it. I can't, I'm not close to you, so if they smell bad, I won't know. Untie those shoes, slip off your sandals, take off your shoes. I invite you to plant your feet on the ground, your bare feet. And imagine that you're planting your feet on holy ground. Now, what would it be like if you really did believe that your feet were planted on holy ground, to believe that God can make a sacred space even in the middle of this storm we are all facing and trying to push through. Before you go to bed tonight, take a few moments to step away from the chaos you're surrounded by. I know that's a big ask, but I challenge you, I invite you, I encourage you to do it. Step away. Maybe you can go outside. Maybe you can open a window or just look outside. Or maybe you can turn on some music that makes you feel calm. Take off those shoes. Plant your feet in the ground. Ask God what he's doing to spark wonder within you. What field of purple flowers is God inviting you to explore? What bush has God lit a flame to capture your imagination and speak specifically to you? Once you step on this holy ground, where might God take you? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and who seek to live in peace with one another. So let us confess our sins before God and one another using the words that are found on your screen. Merciful God, we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to confess your sins before God in silence. Friends, hear the good news, the best news that I can imagine. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and it's a good thing and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You lifted up prophets among your people like Moses, and you lifted up people who could make some holy trouble to free your people and to save his life, his mother, his sister, Pharaoh's daughter, all of those. And you continue to give us our part to play in making your world more free. And so, with all of your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He came to this earth to make us free. And by the baptism of his suffering, his death and his resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant through water and the spirit. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us so that we might be free, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and he gave it to his friends and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He offered it to them and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we remember these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. And we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And we say, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Friends, I invite you to take your bread, whatever bread you have, whether it is a simple loaf of potato bread and a little bit of grape juice, or whether it is the fanciest sourdough and wine, but I invite you to um, lift a hand um, toward these things as I lead us in prayer together. Holy God, we pray that you would pour out your spirit on all of us gathered here, wherever here might be, for we are all one in your spirit. And on these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other gathered throughout time, throughout space, gathered even as we are apart. 
and make us one in ministry to all of our broken but beautiful world until Christ comes in final victory to make us all free and we feast at his heavenly table. By your spirit, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, as God's children, we invite you to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to, to take your bread. And I invite you to remember that because we all share in the same loaf, we who are many are one body. The bread which we break is our sharing in the body of Christ. And this cup over which we give thanks is our sharing in the blood of Christ. Friends, after we uh, share in this holy meal, we believe that whatever elements we have gathered together and that are blessed, that these are sacred. They are the body of Christ and the blood of Christ to us. And so whatever you don't consume, I invite you to either eat reverently after the service is over or to return to the earth. I invite you to share with one another and to say the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Or if you are alone in your home, I invite you to hear these words spoken to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Friends, this spot on which you are standing is holy ground as you are seeking to find the new normal. <laughs> 
We are praying a blessing every week at Sundays at 6 and the words to that will be found on the screen and I invite you to pray that with me as we go. May the peace of the Lord Christ be with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen, friends. Thank you for worshiping on this holy ground with us. We invite you to take a moment and text or email Peace of Christ Be With You to somebody who you are missing from worship. Thank you again to Natalie for leading us in scripture reading and giving God's word to us this evening. And so now friends, go in peace. And we'll see you next Sunday at 6.